Right now on Connecticut's news station amid rising housing costs, housing advocates calling for action on so-called price fixing by landlords. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin live with the latest. Residents sounding an alarm in Weathersfield over a proposed change to the town's EMS service. Their concerns are ahead. And a look at the proposed benefits for certain workers in our state if they become sick. All local, all morning. This is Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Six o'clock. Good morning. Thanks so much for starting off your day with us here at Fox 61 and Fox 61 Plus America Areas. And I'm Keith McGilvery. Grateful you're here. Hartford Yard Goats, I believe, 17 days away from opening day. But who is counting? That's exciting. A true sign of spring. More or summer, more like yeah, for me. Like that. Good stuff. Listen, glad you're here. We want to get you a first check of the forecast. Meteorologist Matt Scott standing well, by for that. We could put the clock in the corner to say how many days left till uh, the yard goats play, or we could just put the clock in the corner and say how much, how many hours left till spring officially begins. I guess I just want to skip over that and get to summer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's never enough. <laughs> good morning to you, Eric and Keith. Good morning to you. A coolish Tuesday as we say goodbye to winter uh, tonight, 1106, the vernal equinox. Here comes spring and and it takes the winter with maybe a little bit of snow tomorrow. Can you believe that? Yeah, that makes about se uh, enough sense. Not a lot going on other than some clouds. It's a little on the chilled side out there this morning. Temperatures in the 20s for many of you. Uh, satellite radar shows again a little bit of snow trying to hold together off towards the north and west won't do a good job. Uh, temperatures from the 20s to the 30s. 36 in New Haven and Hartford. 34 in Groton. Only getting up to the mid 40s later on this afternoon. So a couple of steps down from where we saw yesterday. Uh, you could think of a little more in the way of cloud coverage for that. Talk about this little minor impulse coming through for tomorrow and down the line. What's it mean for the first weekend of spring? There's 12 of them before summer begins, Erica. We'll have that forecast coming up in a bit. Hey, Rachel Piscatelli, good morning to you on this Tuesday. Hey, Matt Scott, good morning to you <laughs> as well. You? I'm doing great. Good. So good to see you on, t on a Tuesday dark and early. Uh, we aren't following any issues out on the roads this morning, which is good to see. Most of the road work has wrapped up for your morning commute. We'll take a live look outside in various locations over in Waterbury, where an earlier issue involving a tractor trailer has cleared out by exits 21 and 18. Norwich looks okay on 395. New Haven out by Long Wharf, no issues. And East Hartford Route 2, we did have some earlier road work causing some delays out by exit 5, but it looks okay now. New Haven to New York, it's 54 minutes. Waterbury to New York is 55. Westbound, 84. Back to you. Rachel, thanks so much. All right, well, here at Fox Station, we promise to keep an eye out there on rising housing access issues and affordability problems here in Connecticut. And today, lawmakers and housing advocates are going to take on what they are calling price fixing. They are indeed. So they say landlords use software to set prices, helping them raise the rent to unaffordable levels oftentimes. Fox 61's Brooke Griffin joining us live in Hartford with how those lawmakers want to shut down the practice. Brooke, what have you learned? Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you. You know, it's no secret that rent and prices have skyrocketed across Connecticut and really across the country over the past couple of years. But Senator Richard Blumenthal says that's not because landlords are always necessarily choosing to just randomly increase those rates. They actually may be using a software that's suggesting they raise the rates based on data from that community. And that is something that he says he wants to stop immediately. That's something that, that they, he just doesn't want to see in this area. Now, a report by ProRepublica shows companies like RealPage and Yardi advertise themselves as, quote, property management software. But the report says the sites are mainly used as a way for landlords across the country to monitor rent increases and then follow in those footsteps, raising rates often and by quite a bit. Data shows RealPage will suggest increases anywhere from 5 to 12 percent for some properties. One woman living in Washington, D.C. says her rent is set to increase by more than 30 percent this year. She tells us she's been told it's out of her apartment company Company's control, but instead it's up to a third party. This is just a case of corporate greed, plain and simple. There's no justification for a 33% rent increase, and they haven't given me one. They seem to be doubling down that there's nothing wrong with what they are doing and that they are going to keep raising rents astronomically on their tenants. 
And this is leading to legal cases across the country. In Washington, D.C., there's a lawsuit open against 14 area landlords who the attorney general says they are suing or they are using the sites to unfairly inflate rent prices. The North Carolina attorney general also has opened an investigation into RealPage over what he calls concerns of unethical conduct when raising the rates. The FTC and Department of Justice have also filed a suit saying it's illegal for landlords to collude on increase increases, especially when using these websites to do so. Now, to really wrap all of this up today, President Joe Biden is also going to be in Las Vegas speaking on the same topic, especially on these rent increases, circling around using website software to do so. He says that there is a lot to be done and will be announcing plans on how to tackle that issue later today. Live in Hartford, Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Brooke, very much committed to covering housing issues for us for months now. Brooke, appreciate your efforts on that front. We will see you at 7 o'clock. A woman accused of killing her two-year-old daughter in the Connecticut River due in court for a plea hearing. 24-year-old Devani Miller facing several charges, including murder. Police say they found Miller walking along Route 9 North in Cromwell last September. She claimed her baby ran down to the Connecticut River. First responders found the little girl dead near the water. Her attorney says Miller was a devoted mom who loved her child. A Northford man is also due in court for a plea hearing. 51-year-old Arnaldi Silva facing charges in connection to the death of his daughter's two-year-old dog. <coughs> Silva claims the death of the dog was an accident. His daughter telling Fox 61 she doesn't believe him after police say he was drunk when he stabbed the dog to death back in November. A former Glastonbury police officer who's already facing charges for several burglaries across the state has been accused of another one in South Windsor. Patrick Hemingway was arrested on Friday, accused of burglarizing the restaurant Mill on the River last April. Police say he damaged an exterior door and a safe door before making off with an undisclosed amount of money. Hemingway has been in police custody since his arrest last November after he was connected to more than 30 burglaries across Connecticut and also other nearby states. At a Newington this morning where officers say a car and a motorcycle crash in the area of New Britain and Willard Avenues. Now, if you're not familiar with the area, that's not far from the skate park and the ball fields. Officers say the motorcycle caught fire after the crash. We're told two people on the motorcycle and the driver of the car were taken to the hospital to be treated for their injuries. Folks in Wethersfield sharing their thoughts on a proposed plan to bring new EMS providers to the community. Some saying they're worried about response times and costs. Right now, Wethersfield EMS serves as the town's primary provider. The group used to partner with Aetna Ambulance to respond to calls. We're told that partnership ended and Wethersfield EMS is seeking a new partner that apparently caused confusion and concern among town officials who decided it was time to look for a new primary provider. I do feel compelled to make the point the Aetna ambulance showed up maybe 15 minutes later than they did. Just know if Aetna comes into town and our taxes go up, it is on the backs of this town council. Few people spoke in support of the change. We did reach out to an ambulance service for comment. We have not heard back. It is up to the State Department of Public Health to make a final call here. Officers in East Haven are searching for two people who tried to steal someone's cat. Police say the men were armed when they broke into a home on Thompson Street on Sunday afternoon. Officers say the men were after the pet because it's a high value breed. We're told the homeowner fought off the intruders and they were gone by the time that police arrived. The car used in the incident was found in Hamden. Police say they believe the suspects knew the homeowner. And officers in Manchester say they pulled a body out of the Hockenham River yesterday afternoon. Someone spotted the body in the water near New Hillard Street and State, New State Road. A police are now working to identify the person and they're trying to figure out how that person ended up in the river. Today at the state capitol, officials will talk about expanding paid sick time for workers. Governor Ned Lamont calling on lawmakers to pass his bill that he says will require more employers to give sick days to workers. Several business owners and leaders will join the governor for the message happening at 930 in the capital city. Also today, lawmakers expected to take up legislation to raise wages for tipped workers. The Senate bill calling for phasing out gratuities as part of the fair minimum wage 
Right now, restaurant servers and other hospitality workers make less than the minimum wage, but the idea here is that they make up for that with tips. With this bill, those tips would no longer count toward a worker's minimum wage as of July 1st, 2027. That means restaurants would have to pay workers the state's minimum wage, which is now at $15.69 an hour. $41 million worth of grants are set to be dedicated to improving broadband internet access throughout Connecticut. Governor Ned Lamont says the money is coming from American Rescue Plan. It can be used for any plan that would give people in underserved areas better digital access. His office is encouraging local governments, private companies, and also nonprofit organizations to submit their plans. The Department of Energy and Environmental Protection will disperse the funds.